Let's do it. Fire burning inside him, filled with anger. Born warrior, not afraid of danger. Native in a 21st century, facing at the math of genocide. Stereotypes, racism, fuel the fire inside. One of many reasons natives down the ride. Not saying I don't give a f but how can I get the attention of my people without prone evil or the negative? Cause everyone knows sex sells. All I want for my natives to excel. Live a little bit, stay out of jail. Raise a little hell, war who have fun. Set a good example for the next generation. How can you say it real when you thrive? Optimize of your own people. I'm here to keep it real, not politically correct, but savages out here. Rather break necks, cash checks. Don't get me wrong, I'm tired of hearing the same sad song. My people trapped in a bottle, drown their sorrow with no hope of tomorrow. That's why we need to keep it real, learn to heal, and uplift our people. Come on, let's keep it real, keep it real. Hands up, hands up. Hands to the sky like you ready to fight. Hands to the sky. It's not about color, not red, not white. It's about uniting, fighting for human rights. Come on, keep it simple. Destroy the environment, pure evil. World leaders want to talk civil. Well, they talk money and giggle. It's all about the mighty dollar. Simple puppets told what to do. Situation critical. It seems we need a miracle. Landmass looking pitiful. Unite and fighting, it's pivotal. Not caring, that's typical. Not caring for the land, that's criminal. We gotta organize, rise up till we visible. Stand as one, almost mythical. All positive energy, almost electrical. Speaking for what's right, that's acceptable. Decision makers telling lies, unethical. Yelling, grow some mother testicles. Yet it's right, native pride, what's up? Oh, oh. Get ready to fight. Hands up, hands up. Sky like they coming for you, gunning for you. Hands to the sky if you ready to fight. Hands to the sky now we're coming for you, coming for you. How did you decide to take on the name Blue Flames? Oh man, it was just a trial and error. And uh, one time, uh. I was going through issues with uh, myself and my family, and my sister ended up uh, being a victim to MMIW and M missing and murdered Indigenous women. Yeah, and at the time, there was a lot of rumors going around about you know who did it and this and that, and it made me mad, made me angry. And instead of doing something about it and harming someone, my mom told me we need to pray about it. We need to turn it over to the Creator. So we set up the teepee that we, you know, praying, and we prayed all night. Prayed for answers and, you know, prayed for protection and prayed for a new life, a better life, you know, because at the time I was angry, I was mad at the Creator, and I just wanted guidance. And in that ceremony, my sister spoke to me and told me she was okay and told me that she was in a better place. And she told me not to worry. And she told me to not be afraid to sing. And in this ceremony, there was an empty spot next to me. And they say, when there's an empty spot next to you, your loved ones are sitting next to you. So when she spoke to me, I felt, I felt her presence. I felt her lean against me. And it just made me happy. And in that morning time, uh, the, the medicine man, the road man was talking and the fire turned all blue. And as a Native American, you know, we always, you know, just those things and, you know, colors and different things represent different things. And I asked him, what does that mean? And he said, Scott, all these times I've been doing these ceremonies, I've never seen an all blue fire. He said, all that means your ancestors were in here with you last night. And everything we prayed for last night is going to come true. Your problem is going to be okay. And I smiled. And I told myself, I'm going to call myself Blue Flames. So that's what it means to me.
you know, it means the truth, you know, it means family, it means love, you know, it means the opposite of what I was thinking, you know. I was thinking violence, but the creator showed me a different way. And with that, he told me, Scott, pray for a positive mindset, a good heart, speak good about your future. It's going to be that way for you. And after that day, that's what I done. And my life changed overnight. Beamed them up to the mothership, I roared all aboard. They like how I record, leaving broken rings restored. Like the ascension of the Lord, watch us fly across the sky. Be your God for the rod, call me Mr. Bonafide. Take you worldwide, better yet the far side. Show the universe, provide the far side. Open up your eyes, maybe you could realize your people can rise. Come on people, let's rise. Beam me up. Say, beam me up, Scotty. Say, beam me up, Scotty. Say, beam me up. Beam me up, Scotty. But beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up. Beam me up. Beam me up, Scotty. Now you can see. Decode who you be, Jekyll low, hide, you decide, now your mindset free. Break through the chains, in your own lane, I can change the game. It's all love, no pain. Mind moving swift, causing a paradigm shift. Like an earthquake, now lift, share the gift. Be me ups, what they say, here to save the day. Blessed every day, birth a new way, say, be me up. Beam me up, Scotty, but but beam me up, Scotty. Say, beam me up. Beam me up, Scotty, but but beam me up, Scotty. Say, beam me up. Beam me up, Scotty, but but beam me up, Scotty. Shout out to OPB. So in Oregon. Yeah, I attended the Tosoy Oil Terminal Savages uh, protest here in Vancouver, Washington. That was to stop the train development from contaminating the water. I went to that one, and I went to the Known Nestle in the Dallas, Oregon. And after that, I went to the Dapple and Sand Rock, and all of them that had in common was the destruction of the environment and how the powers that be didn't care and kind of pushed the agenda forward and you know, they ignored the scientists, they ignored the kids, they ignored the teachers, and they ignored people like me. And so I ended up creating the song to the sky. That's what inspired me. I ended up going to No Dapple, to Sand Rock, and I performed to the sky for the people there. All the people there was had their hands to the sky, and they were feeling the vibe, and I'm happy I was there. What does living on the reservation mean to you right now? Uh, right now, it means... Uh, survival you know we're still surviving on my reservation we're still having water issues that we still need to work on and there's still alcoholism there's still poverty you know but we're surviving and um we're learning to strive you know i'm trying to educate my youth educate my kids that there's a a way off the reservation that's through education i went off to college and i was gone away from the reservation for a long time and one thing I missed the most was my family and that support. And at the same time, the culture, you know, the teachings, the elders, um, the longhouse, um, my ways, my people live. You know, there's no other place on earth like it. So that's what keeps me there. You're talking about positivity, but you also call yourself a warrior. What's the connection there? Uh, Native Americans, you know, we're, we're warriors, you know. We say... Uh, Soldiers are made and warriors are born, you know, and as Native Americans, we believe we're all warriors, you know, even though <clears throat> we was beaten down in history, you know, the assimilation and the genocide, you know, we still stand tall and represent for our people, you know, who's going to protect us but ourselves. Your day job is as a certified prevention specialist. What do you do day in, day out? We specialize in alcohol, tobacco, and other drug prevention. So we 
try to catch the youth. They call it down the stream, you know, upstream, downstream. And we're trying to catch them upstream before they make it down downstream towards uh, the treatment area. That's where they need the help the most. But we're trying to catch them before they educate them about the consequences of alcohol and drugs. And hopefully they learn and they learn to say no and continue to grow mm-hmm. as a person. How'd you end up in that career? I ended up in this career by chance uh, one day. Someone told me to apply, and they said, you got your degree. <clears throat> Why don't you put it to use? At the time, I was firefighting, and I thought, okay, I'll try. And there was like 32 people that applied, and I ended up making top two. And the first person was like, I don't want the job. So they called me, and I was like, I'll take it, you know, and it's my foot in the door, you know. So it, it's a good career. First time I heard hip-hop, I was a little kid, iced tea, colors, it just changed my life, you know. It was funny to me because I didn't realize there was any other musical genre because that's all I listened to. When you say it changed your life, I mean, what was it about hearing Ice T and then you know other hip hop, other rappers after that 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 changed your life? Uh, just the stories that they're telling that kind of made me relate to them. You know, made me realize that I wasn't the only one that was uh, struggling. You know, I wasn't the only one that was looking around and questioning. You know, what am I doing here? And those stories spoke to me in a way where I thought, you know, this guy's cool. You know, I, I can learn something from him. Too short. He has a line on there, you know, get a degree and get an education, you know. And I was like, whoa. And, you know, you can go on a vacation. You know, it's talking about, you know, rapping those words. And it just spoke to me in a way I thought maybe one day I can get an education and I can go on vacation as well. When did you say, I think that, that I can do this? Make your own music make your own rhymes locally in warm springs oregon uh on our radio station 91.9 fm the station on the reservation (laughs) they got uh native hip-hop hour and every friday they play native hip-hop and one time i was sitting there listening to it and i thought what no man i can do better than that (laughs) you know (laughs) is that how it started just thinking if 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 these people are doing it (laughs) then i can too um kind of you know but at the same time you know i've been around it you know i had friends at studios and i had cousins at studios and everybody else wanted me to write rhymes and you know bust the flow but i was too busy walking down to the basketball court to the gym you know playing basketball and i'd be like nah man but when you guys are done you know send me your tapes i'll check it out i'll Mm. let you guys know what you guys need to work on (laughs) (laughs) a mentor before you've done it yourself yeah yeah it was funny just because i like music and everyone knew that i always had a walkman or cd with me so then let's get to the hundred fifty thousand dollar two-year fellowship you just got what do you hope to do over the next two years i'm hoping to gain some exposure um and to get a new audience you know you're talking about you know just people want to hear the positive message you know But I believe people do, you know, and I believe it's needed. You know, there's we need that balance in this world, you know. So I'm trying to trying to bring that balance on the positive side. I'm on this side, you know. I chose my side, and that's the that's the good side. So I'm hoping uh, I can create more uh, music, build a bigger audience, and go on a Northwest tour, you know, and be able to fund some uh, merchandise with that tour, and be able to pay some local artists and regional artists to open up and to perform, give some artists a chance to um, be on a you know big stage. I'm hoping to do a show in Warm Springs, Oregon on my reservation to bring local support to my local peers there that do music as well. And in the Northwest area, I wanna work with certain artists. So I'm hoping to use this funding to get some features from some artists locally and to get some national features as well. Scott, congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me, Dave.